Hello and welcome to this lesson on polarization, which is part of the AQA A-level physics topic of waves. So in today's lesson, we're going to try to understand and describe the effect of polarization. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we can define what polarization is. We can understand what polarization provides evidence for and look at the applications of polarization. So we're going to look at the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification, 3.3.1.2 longitudinal and transverse waves. Now most wave properties are shared by both transverse and longitudinal waves but there's one thing that distinguishes between the two polarization. So polarization can only happen with transverse waves. So it's important to note that transverse waves can be polarized and longitudinal waves cannot be polarized. And we can polarize waves with, uh, with polaroid filters. Now, as we said before, as most wave properties are shared apart from polarization, it's a very important uh, wave phenomenon to understand. Now in 1808, Etienne Louis Mauss dis discovered that light waves were polarized when they were reflected. Now, at the time, light waves were thought to be longitudinal, so this couldn't be explained. But in 1817, Thomas Young understood that light waves were in fact transverse waves. They were electrical and magnetic fields vibrating perpendicular to propagation, and this allowed for for polarization to be explained. Now, in our heads, when we imagine an electromagnetic wave, we think of the following. Now, in this example, the electrical field is in blue and the magnetic field in red are oscillating perpendicular to each other. But in actuality, an unpolarized wave actually has vibrations in many different planes, with the two components in 90 degrees to each other. So in an unpolarized wave, there are many different planes of particle oscillation. Now, it's important to note that polarization is removing all planes of oscillation except for one plane as shown in this particular animation. So a polarized wave is a wave that oscillates in one direction only. Now a polaroid or polarizing filter can be used to polarize a wave. So ordinary light waves are unpolarized because there are, mix there are waves with a mixture of different directions of vibration. Now a polaroid filter or polaroid works as removes all the different planes of the wave vibration except except for one. It looks darker as it literally removes all of the wave except for particle vibration in one plane. So before the wave hits the polaroid or polarizing filter, there are lots of planes of vibration, but after the, the filter, there is only one plane of vibration. So that's a very important idea to understand. Now we can set up two filters next to each other investigate how, and investigate how this affects the waves. Now, two filters parallel to each other will allow all of the wave to pass through. It'll be at a maximum intensity because after the first filter, you've only got vertical oscillations left after the polar polarizing filter. But the second filter, because it allows vertical oscillations through, okay, they will not be removed. So therefore you've still got your vertical oscillations going through. But two filters perpendicular to each other block out all of the light because the two filters filter out the waves in different planes. So completely block out all of the wave. So after the first filter, only vertical oscillations are left, and at the second filter, the vertical oscillations cannot pass through as they will be removed. So it's shown in the following animation. So you'll see that when the two filters are aligned parallel to each other, all of the wave can pass through in that polarized form, but at 90 degrees, none of the wave will pass through that second filter. Again, we can see this in the real world with the idea of when they are at zero degrees to each other, all the light passes through and it is and it is see-through, whilst when the two filters are at 90 degrees to each other, you'll see that it's gone black as none of the light can pass through. Now we can graph the intensity of the wave that passes through both filters against the difference in angles between the filters. So when the filters are perpendicular to each other, the wave intensity is at a minimum because all of the wave is blocked out by a combination of the two filters. But when the filters are parallel to each other, the wave intensity is at a maximum because all of the wave in one plane of oscillation can pass through both filters. Now you can consider the polaroid filter like a door which has a hole in a particular plane. This allows only that plane of oscillation through the filter and no other planes. You can see in this example that the first filter will only allow the vertical planes through and the second filter only allows the horizontal planes through so in that case nothing will get through. 
Now, longitudinal waves, as we mentioned before, cannot be polarised. Now, with transverse waves, there is a choice in which direction or in which plane the oscillations occur. So, for instance, we could let the transverse wave move in the z direction. So then the oscillations could be, for instance, in the xz plane or the yz plane, or there could be anywhere in between. So there's lots of possible planes of oscillation. But with longitudinal waves, on the other hand, the oscillations only occur in one direction, namely in the same direction as the energy transfer by the definition of a longitudinal wave. So there's no need to distinguish between different oscillation directions because there's only one oscillation direction. So fundamentally the particles in a longitudinal wave vibrate in the same direction that the wave travels in. So therefore there's no possibility to isolate a particular direction of vibration from it. So therefore polarization is not possible in longitudinal waves. So if a wave can be polarized it is proof that it must be a transverse wave and all electromagnetic waves are transverse waves. Now light waves reflect off some surfaces okay, and they can be partially polarized. Now when light reflects when light is reflected by surfaces such as water or glass it can cause glare. As reflected light is partially polarized it allows us to filter out some of it with polarizing filters. So if you view partially polarized light through a polarizing filter at the right angle, you can block out some of the reflected light while still letting through light which vibrates at the angle of the filter. This reduces the intensity of the light entering your eye and is used in sunglasses. Now, in addition to that, TV signals are polarized by the orientation of the rods on the transmitting aerial. So you can see here that there are two types of TV aerial, horizontally aligned aerials and vertically aligned aerials. So to receive a strong TV, TV signal, you have to line up the rods on the receiving aerial with the rods on the transmitting aerial, and if you're not aligned, the signal strength will be lower, and it's the same with radio signals as well, because if you try tuning a radio and then moving the aerial around, the signal will come and go as the transmitting and receiving aerials go in and out of alignment. So it's important to note that polarization has many uses in the real world. Polarizing filters and objects such as sunglasses can reduce glare by reducing the partially plain polarized light created when light is reflected by trans transparent materials such as water and glass. Polarizing filters can also be used by photographers to alter the appearance of the sky because particles in the atmosphere can cause partial polarization by scattering the sunlight. And finally, polarization can be used in stress and strain anal analysis of certain plastics such as perspex. Now polarized light micrography is a useful technique in the analysis of crystal structures. So what have we learned in today's lesson? Polarization is, is, is used as evidence for the nature of transverse waves and applications of polarizers include polaroid material and the alignment of aerials for transmission and reception. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we can define what polarization is, understand what polari polarization provides evidence for, and look at applications of polarization in the real world. So thank you very much for watching this particular lesson on polarization, which is part of the AQA A-level physics topic of waves. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.